All right, in this video, we go over an offer and compromise that we filed that ultimately got accepted. We go over all the forms that we filed, all the documents we sent, the letters we got to and from the IRS, and ultimately the letter that this thing got accepted. In this particular case, the taxpayer is single. He was a wage earner when we filed the offer. Then during this consideration period, he lost his job and then was self-employed. So there's that caveat. In terms of assets, didn't really have much in assets, so it's pretty straightforward on that part of this offer. Um, and then we also go over the timeline. In short, this took 15 months from the time we filed the offer till the time we got the letter that this thing was accepted. He owed about $130,000 when we filed the offer and we actually got this thing settled for $1,000 even. My name is Anthony Fontana, I'm a CPA, and if you're looking to learn a little about this offer and compromise, maybe you wanna file something yourself, you'll be able to learn a lot with this video. So stay tuned. All right, so here's a copy of the 433 that we actually filed, okay? I just redacted all the good stuff here, all right? Basic information here, he is renting his house, he does not own the house here. Okay, no dependents in his case. It was just him. He's single by himself, and he was a, a, a wage earner, right? So he's employed, and we included that information here. Again, when we originally filed, was employed, and then, you know, halfway through this case, essentially, while it was getting determined, he lost his job and then was self-employed. But nonetheless, there it is. We filled all this stuff out here, too. Okay, um, and then he only had one bank account, so it's pretty straightforward. We put his checking account here. He had about two thousand dollars when we filed this offer, so minus the thousand dollar exemption that we get, he had a thousand dollars towards the offer, and you'll see ultimately that was our offer. No stocks, <clears throat> stocks, bonds, virtual currency. Didn't have a retirement account. It's pretty relatively straightforward in terms of assets. Really, no assets. He did have a car, but he was leasing the car. Right, we put the lease here. Um, so if you lease the car, essentially you sell it. You can't sell it because it's not yours. <laughs> so there's no mar no market value to this thing. So a lease really does help with the offer here. Um, that was his monthly payment, big monthly payment he had there. He got into that and then fell into hard times essentially is what happened. All right, um, no other personal assets. We just had $1,000 essentially that was eligible for the offer from the bank account. Um, at the time we filed this offer was not self-employed. So didn't fill out this section. Just check the no box here. No business assets at the time. Okay. Um, there you go. Business income expenses wasn't there. Here we go. He did have right his gross wages. So this is from his employee employment, uh, from the paychecks. That's what he had there. Okay. Again, directly from the paychecks is what that comes from. Um, and then we have all our monthly household expenses. This is like the meat and potatoes of the offer and compromise. I have lots of content on the offer and compromise on the page. I have a whole playlist dedicated to the offer and compromise. So if you need, you know, essentially more detailed information to any of this, be sure to take a look there first as uh, there's a lot of good info there. Okay. Nonetheless, he took a lot of the standards. That's a standard. That was the standard, um, for where he lives, but uh, he was actually paying, I think, a little bit more than that at the time. So it's the lesser of what you actually pay or the standard um, for the housing and utilities. This is car payment. Um, we didn't actually get to get the full amount because, uh, yeah, there is the standard there. But nonetheless, we put the full thing there. There's the operating costs. Again, again standard we got there, standard on the health care. Um, and then that was his current taxes. That's a uh, Fed, state, Social Security, Medicare tax that he's paying. And then he's also paying on his student loans. In addition to that, he had a state installment agreement for tax debt with the state. So as his monthly expenses exceeded his household income, he had nothing left over. So the next page here, section eight, <clears throat> The only thing we have here is that $1,000 in the bank account. So that was our offer, okay? And we submitted this thing. If you're looking to get help with your case from me, I do not actually take cases unless I believe that you qualify for an offer. There can be lots of downsides to filing an offer and having this thing get rejected on the back end. 
So we require that we go through a consultation for your particular case to see that, hey, do you qualify for this offer? If you'd like to do that, please use the link in the description below to schedule an appointment. We also submitted this with the 656, of course. Um, just redacted all the good info here. Put all the years that he, um, sorry, that he had the tax debt for. Again, he had 130K about-ish, $130,000 of tax debt from all these years. Um, so we're submitting the offer for those, okay? Didn't qualify for the low income, so we had to pay the application fee plus the down payment. Um, we marked it as doubt it's collectability, which is generally the more common reason why we're doing the offer. Um, and then the payment terms, right? We have $1,000 as the offer. He put, we did the lump sum cash here instead of the periodic payment. Um, so he put a thousand dollars, $200 went with the offer. And then, you know, the $800 remaining was paid within five months after the offer was accepted. Okay. So there's that. And then we signed this thing and sent it off, All right? Yep. There we go filled those out as well. This is definitely important that you fill this out. And then all the terms of the offer and then, you know, what we sent out. Okay. All right. So along with the 433 and the 656, we also did send the following three months of pay stubs from his work, a copy of his lease statement for the car, three months of bank statements, uh, the state payment plan. Um, so it was a copy of the fact that, hey, that he was established on a payment plan with the state for back taxes. And it had on there the balance, the current balance of the payment plan, which the IRS will require. Also had a copy of his current student loan statement, which had the balance on there as well. So those all went also with this offer and compromise, the original filing of this thing. All right, so in terms of the timeline, this is kind of like what happened uh, when we filed and when we, you know, kind of all the little events that happened in the meantime. But it was a little wonky. I'm not so sure why his his case kind of bounced around like this. But, you know, we filed June of 21. We got all these letters saying that they were received or received. Then he got a balance due notice. Um, then again, two more offer received letters. Um, and then finally in May of 22, <clears throat> Almost a year later, right? An examiner got assigned. Um, then it took time for you know us to kind of go back and forth, sending over updated documents, and then for eventually us to get the uh, acceptance letter from the IRS. But nonetheless, 15 months from the time we filed till the time this thing got accepted. <sighs> All right, so here is the timeline essentially, right? We got a letter saying, hey, Anthony, looks like we received your offer, right? We'll be contacting you by then. And then we got, so again, this was July. And then we got another one saying in October, we received your offer in 90 days, we'll get contacted. And then we got one of these, hey, you got a balance due notice from 2017. And the client got a little scared by this. I said, it's fine. No worries. We're in the offer process. They will not collect on you. We suspend taking collection actions, as it says on these notices. Okay, so no need to worry. Um, and then we got another one, January 18th. We received it, 90 days. We'll contact you. And then again, March, we received it, 90 days. We'll contact you. And then finally, I got contacted. <laughs> Took a while. But uh, nonetheless, we then had to send over all this information here to the IRS, updated information, okay? We had to send over, because now that he was not employed, we had to send over the year-to-date P&L, profit or loss for 2022. Um, the fact that he made a quarterly tax payment, right? Because one of the terms of the offer is that you have to stay compliant with taxes, i.e. paying your current taxes. And so we had to send that over and he did do that. Last three months of checking account, okay? And then the lease agreement and um, credit cards statements. So I actually, they didn't request those, but I sent those through because those show that the taxpayer made these payments here, okay? And I kind of explained that here. He kind of had a, like a, a wonky deal where he agreed to change the flooring in the place that we was at in lieu of 
payments for rent. So uh, he's a handy guy and he got this done himself, but you'll see, you know, that he did make like big payments in terms of to this flooring company to essentially pay for all the new flooring and stuff. So nonetheless, this was in lieu of his check. And that's kind of what I explained here uh, for his rent payments. Nonetheless, sent this through with all that information. Um, and then ultimately we got this, I say, golden ticket here, right? September 20th, 2022. We've accepted your offer and compromise. This is awesome, right? We applied the $200, which was, you know, from here, the $200 from the 656. It should show right there. There it is. That that down payment, 200 bucks right there to the offer. And then, you know, the additional 800 bucks was was due within the five months. And then it's this essentially tells us how to make the payment. Okay. And then what happens if you fail to do so, right? Essentially your offer goes up in flames. Well, I hope the video was helpful. If it was, please hit that like button, subscribe for more of these offer and compromise videos. I have again, a playlist of these offer and compromise case examples where they do get accepted. Uh, in addition, just have a whole bunch of back tax help information on the page. So be sure to check those out. And uh, again, if you want me to take a look at your case, be sure to use the link in the description below to schedule an appointment. Thank you so much.